Dr. Berhan uh, Asfa. Uh, Dr. Asfa received a PhD in anthropology from the University of California in Berkeley. He's the former director of the National Museum of Ethiopia and ran the Paleontology Inventory of Ethiopia Project during the 1980s and the 1990s. He is the co-leader of the Middle Ashwa Research Project, which has discovered a number of uh, Pleistocene and late Miocene hominid remains along with uh, Awash River in Ethiopia. Currently, he is a member of the Board of Trustees of Pale Anthropological Scientific Trust and is also a board member of the Institute for Human Evolution at the University of Witwatersrand in Johannesburg. Dr. Asfa has written many publications about fossil hominids and has worked extensively on the recovery and analysis of several notable fossils, including the cranial remains of Ardipicus, uh, Australopithecus uh, gardi, which is a 2.5 million year old hominid species, and Homo sapiens, Idaltu, a million year old Homo sapiens whose child sized cranium has been discovered. The lecture topic today is environmental responsibility and ecotourism, opportunities for successful nation branding in the 21st century. I'd be very, very happy to welcome to the stage and I'd ask you to help me in welcoming him, Dr. Berhan Ashfa. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to come back to this podium and to speak about paleoanthropological research from a different direction. The topic I'm given today is something that I cherish because I'm always worried about continuity. Continuity of research, continuity of res resources. Paleotourism as a key component of ecotourism in Africa, one Ethiopian's perspective is the topic I chose. And I think it fits the theme, environmental resource responsibilities and ecotourism. The development of ecotourism in the 21st century, national branding, environmental responsibilities and ecotourism, cultural diplomacy and sustainable tourism, high level of tourism and strong nation branding. All this fits to the topic that I'm really interested in because I'm talking about a unique set of combination of cultural heritage in Ethiopia. And I would like to explain the benefits and the challenges that we are going to see together. Ethiopia is blessed with lots of resources, cultural resources. I put this one first, because the country is known for its historical assets for years. This is one of the rock-hewn churches of northern Ethiopia in Lalibela, built from a single monolithic rock at the beginning of like the ninth, end of ninth century beginning of the 10th century from a single rock. Very impressive. But as it is impressive in these historical records, we have also diverse natural historical sites. From the Simen Mountain all the way to the Bali, from the Danakil deserts all the way to Wanji in the western, Danakil in the east, and in the west to Wanji, the beautiful Wanji, and the other sites are very impressive. These are the best tourist destinations, and these are the best sites that the whole world should protect, even though we are lucky it is in our country. And I consider them, even though some of them are not registered as a World Heritage Site, I think they belong to the whole world. That's why I think we have to care for them. As an academics, I see them from research point of view, from human origins point of view. And the country is blessed with diverse cultural resources, a minimum of 100 different kinds of people speaking different languages live in Ethiopia. It's not a lie if I tell you that the whole of Africa is represented in Ethiopia. The features, 
You might have seen you know, people like me, mostly in Europe, and, and then you may, you may brand us as we are. We represent the future of Ethiopia, which is not really true. It's not really true. If you think about Congolese, you'll find them in Western Ethiopia and in the central part of Ethiopia. If you think of you know, somebody that looks like you know, South African, you'll find them in the central part of you know, Ethiopia. And everything is represented in Ethiopia. It's not only the, the prehistoric assets that unites every one of us, even the modern people that live in Ethiopia unites the whole of Africa and unites the whole of world, the whole world. That's why I think it is very important that we protect and use, use them as destinations of tourism for just to enlighten the people about how united we are, how the same, the whole diversity of people that you see in the world are literally just in one place showing us a common origin, which is going to be proved also by the fossil record that we have. So the last part I'm going to talk about is the prehistoric asset. So there are four components. So I think the fourth component, the seven million year of prehistory that we see in Ethiopia, that we have in Ethiopia, is also part of the ecotourism package. It is the same. I'll show you how it's the same and it is susceptible to damage and we have to protect it. We have to protect it and we have to promote it. Protect it doesn't mean that you don't keep, keep it away from people. Keep it open, but use it with maximum care because it is irreplaceable. Back to Africa. We are all Africans and the resource is the same. The boundaries are fake. These are fake boundaries created very recently in the last 200 years. This is one. The resources are the same. Seven million years ago, our ancestors branched away from our closest living primate relatives. That is all African. And the sites are distributed in these sites that you see from Chad all the way to South Africa. For the next five million years, the human story is exclusively African. Nowhere else is only African. This is just to show you the most recent divergence, split that we are, are the, our closest relatives to all humanities are the chimpanzees. We split up from the chimpanzees about a little more than seven million years ago. The one on the other side, what you see is the first Homo sapien from Ethiopia, 160,000 years old. Don't think that Homo sapiens are only 40,000 years old. That's not true. That is history. That has changed. This is the record. The first Homo sapien is this, 160,000 years ago. When Neanderthals were occupying the whole of Central Europe, Western Europe, and part of, a little part of Asia, just the western part of Asia, Homo sapiens were in Africa already. And this is the evidence. This is our common ancestor before we diverge in different colors and different features. Now you can see how recent it is. All this diversity of colors are the products of evolution in a very, very short time, and the evidence is there. The sites, the first site that we know for human evolutionary records is South Africa. South Africa, research in South Africa started a long time ago, almost close to 100 years ago. And the sites we know, at least they go as deep as about 3 million years ago. Very impressive record, very good record, but the depth goes only about 3 million years and continues all the way up to Homo sapien time. The next country is a very rich country in paleontological resources. On human evolution, the first person that comes to everybody's mind is Kenya. And research in Kenya started thanks to the Likis, to Lewis Liki, 
started in 1913. And from that time on, research has been going on and look at the sites, so many sites. Some of them, they go as deep as six million years ago and they continue, even though it's not really packed, but it's a lot of, a lot of data that's available in Kenya. We are latecomers. Like our long distance runners, we started late that we are able to catch up. <laughs>